Hello and welcome back to the um, Learning Guitar series. This is uh, the seventh episode of it. And in the first week we, uh, we discussed uh, the shape of uh, E and the shape of D. By shape of E, I mean this kind of chord. In this case it's a G, but basically it's E major transposed. And then we looked at the shape of D, so we looked at the shape of D transposed. And of course we also looked at the, the uh, relative arpeggios and chords. And now it's time to discuss the shape of C. So we're looking at this particular shape. Again, let's imagine it like having a massive barre here on fret zero. And as we transpose, we get C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, and G. And of course, you know, A flat, and so forth and so on. But I stopped at G for a second because since we are looking at very often things from a G point of view, but for now, um, now you can see that suddenly we have three, three way of playing a G major, depending on where we are on the guitar, and that's kind of an important thing because uh, we keep moving, covering more uh, larger part of the neck. Uh, this time I will not go through, you know, like moving the camera like I did in previous lesson, going through um, some sort of theory and then the PDF for the simple reason that it's kind of the same theory that we discussed in week one and four. Um, the only thing that changes now is the shape and we're going to look at the PDF in a second in practice, and, you know, that's pretty much the only difference. Uh, what's important in this case is, again, our... Uh, visual reference in terms of uh, photographic memory and muscle memory, which means when you look at this shape, this is your root note. That's your, one of your visual references. This is your root note, this is your root note. So this is a D note, and that's a D major, okay? Looking like a C shape. So if this was your root note and you want to employ this particular shape, that's your reference. Now, I'll be honest with you, in terms of uh, strumming chord, so like the type of chord that you would use, say, on acoustic guitar when you're accompanying somebody. Personally, I don't use this very often as a chord. As a scale, absolutely, even more as an arpeggio. But when we look at lessons nine and we look at the, uh, the various chords we can get out of uh, this shape, there are some very interesting ones. So don't this, this might be hard at first, but don't disregard it completely because these kind of chords, that's a, now we're in the key of F, that's a six with a major seven. Uh, or like a major nine, actually very easy to play, major seven, two nines. I mean, there are chords which are actually easier, much easier than this, either less. Uh, first of all, the, what you might want to do eventually is, if you can't, right, as you're watching this video, you want to sc um, split the screen off, maybe like uh, if you downloaded the PDF or if you printed it, it's even better. Uh, have the PDF. I'm gonna go through it, uh, explain the few things that needs to an explanation. Uh, compared to week uh, to lesson one and four, the first nine pages again, it's, it's the concept is the same. First, you have the scale, and then you have all the intervals. Uh, in this case, the scale is written in the key of D, so we're starting down here for the simple reason that we're, we're gonna go chromatically like we always do. This is the scale. That's your root note. what you're doing, right? That's E flat. That's E. Have your visual on that root note. That's your F. F sharp. G. Since we're in G, going back in the shape of D. After that, you have the usual uh, interval studies. So you have seconds, uh, uh, thirds, uh, 
verse thirds. <laughs> Alternated. Um, alternated reversed. Yeah, like what I like to call uh, alternating A, alternating B. Uh, again, if you're familiar with these lessons, uh, you've been through this before. Now, for those of you that are wondering why there are so many different variations of the same thing, first of all, there is more than that. There are more variations than this. These are just some of them. But they kind of help you dealing with different kind of circumstances, believe it or not. So let's take, for example, um, thirds in a you know, descending fashion. Let, let's, let's look at it from the point of view of F, okay? When I play thirds, Descending. If I start from the first note, I get this. Fairly easy. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. All fairly easy, right? But if I do it reversed, so if I start from the second note, and I have this little barre going on, like I have to rotate my finger to get it nice and clean. Again. Again. Does that make sense? So you have a lot of this more, more, more. Lots of these little but I think and when you play fourths is even worse. Okay. Uh, see? So and it's important that you learn how to create separation when that happens and not sounding like a chord. You don't want to sound like that. Okay, same thing when you're doing the alternated version. So you have a lot of these little issues that you encounter just because you're reversing something, something or you're playing it in an alternating version. And um, and that's the reason why I'm doing it this way, right? Uh, what else? So I think at the end of page uh, four, then we have the triads, like uh, every other time. And again, practice the same exact way. So. <laughs> Sometimes I do some little mistake here and there, and it's kind of normal, you know, and I don't want to do one of those videos where you're editing everything out just because, you know, it has to look perfect. I mean, when we're practicing, we're making mistakes. Just make sure that they're not recorded, because if mistakes are happening always in the same spot, it means that you're developing habits. Uh, of course, this you want to do this to a metronome. Uh, let's say, like, I have an 80 BPM metronome. Uh, you can do eight notes if this is the first time you do these kind of things, so especially large intervals, so let's say intervals of sevens, right? In that case, you know, again, I'll do it in the key of F. Uh, in the PDF, it's in the key of D, but again, you're just pausing it, so, you know, memorize it. So you have something like this, right? Uh, sevens, yeah. That's 
in triplets. Same thing when you do reversed. If you do want to do it in eights, kind of slow, but might be effective because these are difficult, right? triads is the same and then of course you have the extended triads and that would be uh, page five I think yeah at the end of the page five so Triads, you have the groupings, which actually, in a way, uh, are the easier thing to practice if I think of what we got until now. And um, so, you have group of three, I'll do it in triplets, right? Let me stop the measurement for a second. Um, things becomes a little bit more interesting and maybe less routine-wise, if you want to put it that way. Once we approach page nine, and what you, what you got there is a kind of exercise I devised so that you can practice the transition across the shapes, a bit like we did in lesson four. This time we are moving three scales at the same time. This uh, this will allow you also to kind of refresh 
what you did in lesson one and four. Um, I hope you have the PDFs in front of you. If you don't, once you approach page nine, I actually wrote it there. And the progression goes F, so you have a shape of D, going into E flat, so you have uh, your shape of C, going into A flat, and now you have your shape of E, and it keeps kind of moving that way, almost chromatically, so that you're not only practicing always the three shapes, in terms of scale this time, in the future we'll do it as chords, but you're also moving across the guitar, it's not static. So you're practicing everything that you've learned so far, and you're also practicing across the board. So this kind of exercise uh, kind of addresses um, uh, one of the issues that we talked about maybe last lesson or maybe lesson four, where you're moving on in terms of you know having to learn more stuff and you don't want to leave other stuff behind. So in terms of you practicing this exercise in the PDF, I wrote it in scales. So let's say I'm going F, Ionian, coming back, E flat. So that was uh, shape of C, E flat. Then I have A flat, shape of B, e. F sharp, uh, F sharp, shape of D, then E in the shape of C, then A, and it keeps going. So basically, you're practicing all the scales you learned so far, and. You might want to apply this kind of progression exercise also to study of intervals. So, say if you want to practice seconds, what you're doing shape of D, shape of C, shape of G, uh, sorry, shape of B. of uh, 20 minutes at a time and I think it's kind of approaching those 20 minutes so we're just gonna take a very short break and then we'll continue so welcome back um, what are we so now we are in page 11 and uh, page 11 instead is dealing with uh, you um, washing across the various shape but staying in the same key exercises are written in the key of G. The concept is fairly simple. Instead of just moving uh, vertically, you're trying to move horizontally, okay? Negotiating. And you might want to try and do this on every string, wherever it feels, you know, somehow comfortable. a few examples but of course you can devise many more another way of doing it is going down that's actually example one up in the other shape down right and I, of course do this to imagine I'm just you know trying to keep the video not too long uh, so this is what exercise 1, 2, and 3 deal with. And on page 12, 
uh, again, you are trying and apply this uh, using intervals. Same kind of concept when you're moving across the body shape, say like, you know, intervals of seconds, same thing. seconds and thirds you can practice of course you can develop it even further say if you want to do it in fourths and so forth and so on you know see how, how far you can go you can you know loop of four it would be the same Sometimes not to do it necessarily just like a G, maybe like uh, try B flat. You know, you have this, okay, or you know, C, and you have the same kind of. At the bottom of page 12, we go back to what we introduced uh, in lesson 4, so the three notes per string approach. If you remember in lesson 4, once we connected the shape of G, uh, so the shape of E with the shape of D, we also introduced to the idea of playing scales of three notes per string. So we had these two configurations. Now, because we added also this gauge, we have a farther. Especially for those of you into, uh, you know, metal or playing with a lot of distortion and stuff, that's kind of uh, um, interesting to develop, especially because it lends itself to legato and there is consistency in the right end. The only thing I suggest when you do this kind of exercises, especially if you do it in legato, make sure that you're well warmed up. But obviously, if you've been doing the other exercise first at a normal speed, say 80 BPM, 90 BPM, by the time you get to this, you'll be warmed up, okay? Without, you know, feeling too tired about it. Uh, I wrote a few exercises for you. You can write many more. Uh, and they kind of uh, reflect what we did what we did uh, in the previous week. Let's say, for example, uh, let me give you uh, the, the, in page 13, exercise four is basically this. pattern then executed here. Right? So uh, I wrote down like uh, several exercises, I think mm, six, some of them are combined so they're actually longer. And like we did in lesson four, again, uh, go to town, you know, actually design your own. At this stage, by now, I'd, you know, after seven lessons, I think you understood the logic of uh, what I'm writing to you in terms of PDFs. Uh, what's important is that you develop horizontal connection in between the shapes that we're studying and also vertical connection. So when you're practicing this in terms of uh, especially the exercise in page 12 is uh, rather important. Uh, sorry, not page 12, uh, page um, 9, where you're going across all the key changes. Because of course, like you, once you master that, you know, your photographic memory will improve dramatically, okay? 
And that's the important part. Of course, you're studying the intervals and you're studying, uh, you know, all, all the, 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 the little elements that I believe then will lead you to phrasing. Uh, sound is not particularly important. The genre, I do, you know, different genre, you use that in different ways. Uh, I'm hoping that you're understanding the logic of what I'm trying to explain to you because you know, I would not be surprised that at some point when you when a new lesson comes out, all you're doing is to get the PDF and not having to listen to my blurb. But at the same time, some of my blurb, not all of it, but some of it, is kind of useful in terms of you understanding how to approach this and maybe some of the problematic, you know, that we encounter as guitar players. Then, as I said before, uh, learning guitar for the vast majority, in my opinion, is a, is a kind of a problem solving kind of thing. You're trying to solve small issues, right? Like the small butter thing I described you before. In terms of playing this stuff, uh, in terms of practicing, of course you want to spend some time practicing just in one key, like we did before. So like in this case, literally you might want to use G, and just loop a G chord and just try and move across the, across the neck. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, by the way, I'm not using effects this time because I saw a, a nice little comment uh, uh, on the channel, I think it was a comment to the, to the previous lesson uh, where somebody wrote uh, uh, if I could please take off all the effects I'm using. <laughs> I think in the lesson I was using delays and causes when I was playing chords. I kind of like effects, okay? But uh, if it does help, I don't know if that comment was trolling or was genuine. I, I think it does genuine, you know, why not? So if uh, if it does help your understanding of what I'm doing, I'm more than fine not to use them, right? Uh, when I'm doing one recording, uh, when I'm recording my album or, you know, uh, but actually, by the way, right now I will not even damn them because I have a rig set up. I'm doing some, some sessions for an artist, so I don't actually have them. But nevertheless, if it helps your understanding, or I, I have no issue with that. You know, I just like the comment, right? So that's the G chord. Uh, spend that much 
much time you can spend on it, right? Now, the other exercises that, that you should do involves uh, key changes. And um, what I thought would be a, a good progression without having to move too much uh, would be, say, like F. Uh, actually, even better, F. A G Okay, kind of, kind of simple, right? It's a bit like you playing In a circle Of course we're gonna uh, It would be a good idea to stay longer on each chord So that gives you time to kind of also practice the shape a little bit so maybe I'm gonna do say four bars for each so that gives enough time on each of them before we change so let's start from A and we're gonna do A F G okay So in A, we're using uh, uh, shape of E. Then for F, shape of C. Uh, 
um, to me, what's important that you understand the logic uh, behind why I thought it's a good idea to have a progression which is uh, I don't know, A into uh, G into F. All I'm looking for is eventually a chord progression that allows me to stay in one area of the guitar and then change chords. So in a way, you can devise others and even more sophisticated. You know, what's important is that you understand the objective. And the reason I'm doing four bars, that's, you know, especially at first, it might give you enough time for your brain to process. Okay, I need to change and I need to go from here to here. Uh, once again, the, 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 the objective of this lesson is uh, well, not for me to look good. You know, I, I record albums. If you want to listen to me sounding good, listen to my albums, <laughs> right? So this is definitely not about me. Uh, Hopefully you find enough information and maybe inspiring information for you to understand how to learn the instrument. You know, maybe I'm, I'm hoping that I'm capable of teaching that. And um, so, again, it's it's hard work at first and I understand studying all these, especially the intervals. I know it's, it's tough and the arpeggios also. But as I said, as we move forward, it gets kind of a little bit easier. Plus, this is the grammar. So, you know, it doesn't happen in a month, okay? You know, it's, you could ask any guitar player that, you know, has done anything in life with a the guitar. They'll tell you it doesn't happen in a month. So be patient and have passion for studying and learning something new. And of course, try and apply this straight away. That's why I also encourage you to play as much as possible and trying to, you know, to use this stuff straight away. So I hope this was informative. There is a lot more on the PDF. It's 14 pages of stuff, and uh, as, always, as always, I will upload it. I hope you guys are doing okay, since we are still in lockdown. And um, what else? Uh, again, if you have any question, leave it in the comments. Uh, even if you want to say hello, just, you know. And next time, we're going to do the arpeggios in these particular shapes. The sequence is the same. Our next is arpeggios, and the following one is the chords. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and, well, I don't think, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say, but I don't think I do. That's pretty much it, you know. Okay, probably I'll, you know, it's going to be another week or 10 days uh, before the next lesson. Um, anyway, I, I released seven lessons, I think, in a month, and I know that, you know, that's probably way too much for, for you guys to keep up, especially if you've never done this before. For those that have done this stuff before, maybe you're filling some of the gaps that you left behind. Maybe I'm helping you with that. Or maybe out of all this, you know, say 14 pages, there is four exercises that is good for you. You know, whatever. You know, do 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 what's good for you. Um, and that's it. You know, take it easy. Don't play too fast at first. It's no point. You know, learn the, learn the craft and then, you know, we'll talk about speed at some point. You know, although I'm not like a fast player myself. Okay, it's been a pleasure, and until next time, stay safe. Okay, bye.